Hello, a little bit of an impromptu setup today. want to talk about something that I think can only be described as cross-format tape processing or cross-format cassette processing, depending on how you want to look at it. I have in front of me two cassette recorder slash players. The first one is a Tascam Porter Studio 414 Mark II, pretty standard. Uh, and this one over here is a Sony TCM 200 DV. This is more of a dictaphone, very lo-fi, has a VOR as well as a, a good amount of speed control, which I, I think is very useful, or is what makes this, I guess, such a musical piece. And then here in front of me, just as a sound example for us today, I have my Moog Mother 32, very simple patch, something light, something that I think will work well with the type of processing we're going to do today. These two units have very different sound qualities on the recording as well as playback side. The task game is, of course, a little bit cleaner. Uh, the TCM, the Sony, has a much grittier, lo-fi quality, a lot more noise. Um, which I like and is good for certain circumstances. However, sometimes I find, for example, with uh, the Sony, I like the playback quality of it when it gets really gritty and dirty. Um, and it's very useful for me to use that if I want to, for example, run the output into the Moog or run the output into my plum butter and then come back into the task game. It, it gets tricky because I already have the sends on the task game set up to, to my reverb over here. Um, so sometimes I think it would be it would be useful to have an instance where I can record onto tape via this machine that's for mixing four separate tracks together onto this thing and then playing it back on this thing, back into the mix, processing with other effects, etc. The, the primary difficulty in going back and forth between these two mediums is the way that they're recorded. So the, the Tascam runs and records four tracks on both sides of the cassette at the same time. So side A on the cassette is tracks one and two, side B on the cassette is tracks to two, three and four. Um, so if you just record, which is something I tried earlier today, if you just record onto track one of the cassette and try to on the task game and try to play it back on the Sony, it doesn't work. Um, so what you have to do is you have to set on the task game. There are these kind of, uh, I guess code, you can call them record lanes, tracks one, two, three, or four, or a left, right mix. So when you're doing this, you unfortunately are limited to mono because the Sony is a mono playback device. So you have to set all of your, channels on the task cam to left, right, left, right. Here, let me turn the effects down, make sure those are all good. So what you can do at this point now is you can record onto the, the task cam and then play it back off the Sony. This can be really helpful for a few reasons. Namely, one, uh, the task cam is a far, far better recording noise uh, signal to noise ratio than the Sony does. The task cam also has a much better uh, input preamp, uh, both for mic and line level instruments and synths. However, what is nice about having the cassette be on the Sony for playback is that I can then route the Sony through my other instruments, through my plum butter, through the Moog I use as a filter, through pedals for delay and reverb, etc., and then go back into the mix on the Tascam, running other instruments, and then using the effects sends to process uh, with a global reverb or a global compression or something like that. So let's kind of go over just a very simple way that this can be done, and show you some of the interesting things that happen when you record on one machine and play back on the other machine, and then we'll flip it around and see what happens. So first thing we have to do is set our pitch control. We can set it to whatever we want. I'm gonna start setting it high because as you'll see, different record speeds result in different playback pitches and playback speeds on the Sony. Um, so we're gonna record something really simple. I just have a very pretty sequence running on my Mother 32, no patching, nothing fancy. So the reason I made this sequence run so fast is because the Tascam records at a much faster rate than the Sony does. So if I were to go slower or at a lower pitch onto the Tascam, that would be played back on the Sony even slower and even of a lower pitch, which can get a little muddy sometimes. And I like to have the flexibility, especially with the Sony, to be able to go slower if I want to or go faster if I want to. Um, in terms of playback, just to match the pitch better of whatever I'm working on. And if I go too low on the record side, then things start to get muddy and they get a, a little less pleasing to listen to and a little more difficult to mix in with other instruments, especially something like the Plum Butter, which has a lot of low frequency and low mid frequency information going on, which is what I really like about it. So I want to complement that with my cassette recordings. Okay, so what we're going to do here is pretty straightforward. We're just going to record a simple sequence from the Mother 32 into the Tascam. Very key, we're going to be recording on left and right mode here. 
So turn, go ahead, turn up channel one. And just as a demonstration, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna record a small part of the sequence, and then I'm gonna change the record speed uh, on the Tascam. And then we can listen back on the Sony and see what that sounds like. It's, it's rather interesting. I'm gonna go fast, then normal speed, and then slow speed, and we'll just take a listen to that. All right, here's uh, fast speed. Here's normal speed. And here's slow speed. All right, so let's stop that. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna rewind back to the beginning and then we'll pull the cassette out of here, throw it in here and see what happens. Okay, so we got the cassette out of the Tascam. We got it in the Sony. I'm going to just move the Mother 32 whoop, out of the way and kind of bring this guy front and center. And so got my little adapter cable here. We'll just go into channel three because why not? Throw this bad boy up here. So make sure everything is set to zero. So remember the order we recorded this in. It was the fast speed, then the medium speed, and then the slow speed. So I'm going to play it back in that exact order and hear to what it sounds like on this machine versus this machine. Super slow. So what is going on here? So the Tascam, when we adjust the pitch control, we're going up or down 10% of its normal speed, which is 3.3 and 3 quarters ips. So when we record faster, we're playing back even slower on the Sony, because the Sony is looking for, I guess it would be like 1 and 5 eighths ips. So when we record even faster, we're even increasing the gap between the speed of this unit and the speed of this unit. So as we increase that gap, the pitch perceived pitch on the output is lower. So as we decrease the speed on the, so the Tascam, we're getting closer to the speed on the Sony and therefore closer to the true pitch of the Mother 32 going in. It's a really useful effect because now we can have a lot more control over the speed we're recording onto this unit with. Um, and because this unit is so versatile, it has EQ, it has multiple inputs, as I'll showcase in a second, we can have much more flexibility out of the true usefulness of the Sony. And for me, at least, that's its ability to integrate easily into a setup with other instruments. So what we're going to do to demonstrate a more real world use is make some groovy ambient or some vapor wave. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out using uh, the vocal sample for just for some drums, the Mother 32 for Mother 32 things, using the same sequence as before. And then we're going to use the Tascam to mix it all together onto one track, two tracks, but one track. So I'm gonna go ahead, set everything to LLR here. I'm not using track two, just gonna use these two and these two. Okay, so I've got the cassette all the way back to the beginning. I've got my vocal sample for some drums. I got my Mother 32 playing the same sequence as before. Just gonna have a little fun with this one. Um, nothing too fancy because I'm not really sure how this is gonna turn out, um, which I think is the fun about it. Because I'm looking for a little bit of a deeper tone and I'm not quite sure exactly what this is gonna sound like when I play it back in the Sony, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pitch control up just a tad. I just want a little bit more, uh, take a little bit more. I just want a little bit more of a, of a slower playback speed, essentially. A, slow, a lower pitch, we're not actually changing the playback speed. What I want is a little bit of a lower pitch coming out of the Sony from the task game.
All right, so now let's try doing the opposite. So we'll record onto the Sony and play back in the task game and see what that sounds like. For this example, I'm going to use something very similar to what we did last time. Just use the Mother 32, playing a simple sequence, going into the Sony, and then we're going to be monitoring through the task game. And then what I'll do is after I record it, we'll just play it back on the task game and see what that sounds like. I'm using Maths, my first year rack module, to provide some LFO weirdness to the filter on the Mother 32. So let's see what happens. Thank <laughs> you. 